This is for the Bantamweight State title, as well as the Epic Bantamweight title. Let's bring in our first Lady Warrior. Please welcome Kiara Ramos. Your champion, the reigning, defending, California State and Epic champion into the cage, Tina the Predator, Predator! All right, ladies and gentlemen, walking out to the cage right now is Tina, the Predator Pedicru. She's fighting at a Catch-22 MMA slash Alliance Training Center. She's 32 years old. She stands five foot seven, weighed in at 135 pounds. Her current record is 4-0, and she is ranked number 15 in the state of California. Her opponent fighting out of the red corner, who's already in the cage right now, is Kiara Ramos fighting out of the guild slash UFC Jim Roseman. She's 26 years old. She stands five foot six inches tall, 135 pounds, and her current record is five and three. This is for the Bantamweight Championship title. This is for both the Epic title and the Camel State Bantamweight title. Two titles on the line and one fight. That's a lot of risk. If you're trading stocks, that's called putting a lot of risk on the table. Two titles. And we've seen Kiara here before. I believe she fought for us at the last Epic. Both fighters look more than ready to get it on. For the Bantamweight State title and the Epic Bantamweight title. Let's let the ladies let the letter try. Introducing your first warrior, fighting out of that corner. She has a record of five wins and three losses. She stands fighting six inches tall and weighs already 132.4 pounds. Representing the guild, give it up for Kiana Ramos. And their opponent. Fighting out of the blue corner. This woman is a big flash artist with a record of four wins and no losses. She stands fighting seven inches tall and weighs already 132.4 pounds. Representing catch 22 MMA. <laughs> Please welcome the reigning, defending California State and Epic Bangalore Champion, Tina. The Predator! Let it go! For referee in Ryan, the Justice Speak! All right, ladies and gentlemen, here we go. This is the first female fight of the night. This is for the Bantamweight Epic title and the California State Bantamweight title. Man, and look at Tina Pettigrew's physique. She looks like she lives in a CrossFit gym. Tina Pettigrew with a solid kick. I mean, it's obvious who has the strength advantage. Let's see if Kiara Ramos's technique is up to par for wow. this test, fighting the champ here. And some solid kicks. Ooh, it's good hand. She doesn't telegraph that right hand at all, does Ramos. Or does not, I should say. Another one. 
and she you watch you at home. Lead, right? She sets that up with the jam, and man, she's gonna be landing that all night. Tina has the blue glove, the blue tape on her gloves, and Kiara has the red tape on her gloves. But look at her, she's just a mule. Look how strong she is. Getting that underhook, driving Ramos into the cage, and Ramos can't do too much. She's doing the light right thing, but it's how do you deal with that sort of strength? It's a tough task. Doing the looking right at, thing, looking to land. I, out. Please educate our viewers, viewers. Could she knee right there? Um, no, you cannot knee. As, as an amateur, you are not allowed to knee to the face. Accidental knees may happen, but you cannot knee to the face. I am not body, crazy about that rule. Yeah. But then again, flying knees do a lot of damage. Remember um, Cyborg Santos' head in uh, Bellator? Oh, my wow. goodness. So wow. maybe that is a good thing. title fight so three threes and right now despite a couple crisp right hands from Ramos we are seeing a cage control victory round for Tina Pettigrew this isn't the first time we've seen this we saw this earlier today with, yes. with Jordan Donay just took the Donay. W by, by controlling that cage control and I mean when you really have a strength advantage you could do that and it's kind of a uh, I, it's kind of like stretching the rules, in my opinion. A little like, bit. You're really here, you're in a cage to fight, and it's like exploiting the rules to get that W. But does that W really mean anything? It does. Do you feel good about a cage control victory you deep know, down? You know, if you I were, know I wouldn't. If you were a college wrestler and you know, you're fighting at the amateur level, you can easily win all your fights like that. Easy. I had one fight in the UFC where I fought a brilliant fight where I just masterful groundwork, right? And it was the most boring fight I ever had. And I felt bad. I apologized about it. <laughs> but I was working the whole time showing great jiu-jitsu. People are just used to seeing me stand toe-to-toe. -to -toe. So to win a fight by cage control, in my opinion, is heresy. <laughs> you should That's be a strong in, word to use. You should be thrown in jail. <laughs> I mean, I just say leave him in the cage. So let's watch this replay. Here's the replay. Look at that. Oh, and look at that right hand. Oh, Woo. solid right hand. And she switched stances for that one. Definitely I, caught Tina Pettigrew off guard. Tina that Pettigrew one. felt that and said, you know what I'm going to do? I am gonna get you up against the cage. <laughs> and that cage work, we're seeing in full effect here tonight in San Diego. Uh, we see certain gyms focus on things like that. When they try to use cage work against the, the, the fighter from Team Quest, it just wasn't really effective. In this case, it is, and I agree, it does make the fight a little bit boring. Yes. There should be something to break that up. You know what, Danny? You just motivated me to become an MMA judge and um, put an end to cage control <laughs> once and for all. Stop cage control. That's our next shirts. Our next shirts for epic yes, fighting that will happen. brilliant Stop idea, Danny. Stop cage control. I love it. I'll make them. I will make those. <laughs> That's my game. I made more money selling t-shirts for the UFC than I did fighting. <laughs> I mean, but that says two things. It either says I sh sold a ton of shirts or I got paid really little money. <laughs> no, I got paid great there. You know, after all, the fight with Forrest. Yeah, that was incredible. That was, that was fire. They, they that, just talked about giving you that contract right there that, on the spot, in the cage. That was five Gs. That's exactly the same thing Dana White spends when he goes out by himself <laughs> for a steak dinner and a bottle of wine. Oh, so far I picked a fight with Jimmy Smith, and now I'm starting... Smack, I'm talking smack to Dana White. There you go. This is what cage control does, ladies and gentlemen. Cage control gets Stefan Bonner in trouble. That's right. Or, or, you, you know, you're, you're going to be a Oh, a takedown. A takedown. Woo. Pettigrew has, she's on top. She's on oh, top. and this is, this is a lot. She's going for that Von, Chuf, Von, Von Fucho. It looks like it. It's there. She's got a. 
Isle Gripper, hands up and get that leg out. It's there. Let's. Oh, she gives it up. Gives it up. Tina Pettigrew, when you watch that, practice that John Von Flu choke. Now, you know, we've said it before, but Ramos is wasting a lot of energy yes. holding on to that head. And these title fights are three-minute rounds, so she's got a little more time to work on the ground. Which is great for jiu-jitsu. You know, what, what, what you want to do when you're in that position is frame. Let the head go and frame. Try to stand back up. Try to establish some sort of control. Get your guard back. Something like that. And she did. Right as you said that, Danny, she got her guard there back. You go. She's listening. That's what it is. She's yes. listening. Yeah, everyone says listen to your corner during the fight. Listen to Joe That's Rogan right. during the fight. <laughs> and there's no better feeling in the world than talking to Joe after a fight. I bet. Everyone said, oh, visualize how the fight's going to go. No, I visualize talking to Joe. Because <laughs> if you're talking to Joe, you must have done something right. That's true. That's true. Leg lock by Ramos. Ramos looks like Look, she's going to go Even if she doesn't get it, she could get a sweep out of this. Oh, but Pettigrew is so strong. Those hips are powerful. She probably could deadlift more than me. Wow, solid. Ouch, ouch. Huge ground and pound. And that is the danger of going for leg locks. Pettigrew letting it. Letting it all hang out here. Letting them shot go shot. at the Crowd end of round two. This is going crazy. Man, now she's making it exciting. She's making me eat my words. <laughs> oh, replay. Here is that takedown. She was putting us to sleep with that cage control, but then she landed that takedown and went to work. And this is where she started trying to work that bomb. Yeah, like, and here no. we see Ramos going yeah, for that leg. That and he, leg she made Ramos pay. She was too strong. Too strong for Ramos to turn with that and unleash. That's the danger of leg locks. You leave your face exposed because your hands are occupied with the leg. Solid work by both fighters. Who would you say you have winning that right hey, now? Hey, uh, all the way, Gina Pettigrew, first round cage control, second round takedown, and merciless ground and pound. Yeah, I'm her, talking fierce. Yeah, and she was, she was letting it all hang out. You can hear her screaming from here. Hop, hop, right? Each throw she was landing. In, in Taekwondo, hop, keto, that's my first martial art. They call that a key up. And it helps your power, just like on weightlifting, when you breathe out as you force that weight up. In powerlifting, too, you see those guys grunting, key up, and ouch! Wow! Bob! Solid right hand by Pettigrew! Ramos is in all kinds of trouble. Pettigrew needs to get off the cage and let her hands go. Let's go! Wow, she had her hurt. She dropped her with a ferocious right hand. And now she's in on I made the same mistake against Keith Jardine. I dropped him, and he got up, and I tried to prevent him from getting up instead of finish him. And that's exactly what Pettigrew did here. When she watches that, boom, there's a lesson to be learned. But right now, she learns, lands another left hook. Ramos is taking some punishment here right now. But Ramos oh, landed, yes. Whoa, well, Pettigrew looks like she might be gassing out. Wow, and the crowd is erupting. Ramos is, look at her, just fucking confidence coming. Wow. And another punch. Wow, Ramos. Wow. Ramos doing a great job staying off that cage now. And look how confident she is. She's got her hands down. And she's letting those punches go. She has the better hands. And Pettigrew is looking tired. She's got a minute and a half left. That is an eternity when you're fatigued. That is true. That is true. I like how Ramos is switching it up. She's throwing oh. body shot, head shot, body shot. Oh. She's just moving, ding, taunting ding. her. Landing wow. at will. Wow, look at that. Look, body oh. shot, head shot. Like Up a top, human top. punching bag. Wow. Listen.
listen to this crowd. Tina Pettigrew really needs to get some head movement going. Wow. Can Ramos you say? Is teeing off on Can Tina. you say? Fight Please, of Louise. the night. Yeah, this, this might be the fight of the night. Fight of the night all the way, Danny. Oh my God, I'm a little late on my phone. Now it's back to cage control. But the big strong girl was go. getting lit up like Ramos. a Christmas tree. Ramos is teeing off again. Oh my goodness. Ramos is letting loose on Tina. Lighting Tina up like a Christmas wow. tree is Tina's Ramos tired. right now. Tina's and another and right here. moving forward. Look Ramos at this. Human shot. punching Ramos bag. Doing such a great Back job. Back in the cage control. Wow, this crowd is erupting. Ten seconds left. All the way, buddy. You know, what's crazy about all of this, what's crazy about all of this is, I wasn't expecting that. I wasn't right. expecting that at all. We have all these, you know, kind of finishes and one-sided fights, and now we have a total change of momentum here. Here goes a replay right here, and if you look, Tina landed a solid Boom. right hand and Boom. rocked her. It's unfortunate if this were a five rounder like most title fights, I think Ramos would take the fight over. Exactly how I felt against John Jones. <laughs> he had nothing left in the third round. And it was only a three rounder because he hadn't yet won the title. Such is the luck of the American Psycho. But right now, we have a hell of a fight. Fight of the night written all over it. I definitely think that this is a running for fight of the night. We thought the last fight might have been fight of the night. This is the one. This yes. is way better. This is way more intense. This is going back and forth. The entire hey. crowd was busting. Everybody was screaming. Hey, hey, Danny. You know who's in charge of fight of the nights? The fans, Danny. Right. The fans. And I think the fans called it. They said that this was the fight of the night. You know what, fans? You are absolutely right. So good sportsmanship. Look at I'm sweating. This fight's so good. Look at that. I'm sweating. That's all right. What a night here at Epic. And we still have more fights left. It's only fight number 13. Only fight 13. So far, there's a knockout, submissions. My vote for fight of the night, one boring decision. I challenged Jim, Jimmy Smith to a fight. I trash talked Dana White. Yeah, yeah. And here we are with more action yet to come. You gotta love epic fighting, ladies and gentlemen. You know, and, and the interesting thing is that this fight was for both the epic Bantamweight title and the California State title. So, both of them on the line here. I mean, I mean, Wow. I, I, I think Ramos is going to take the side I don't know. I think Pettigrew is going to get a two rounds to one decision. Oh, this, man. really, this is the same fight as me and John Jones right here. <laughs> you get a, a wrestler winning the first two rounds and someone running for their life in the third round and you lose the fight. Can you say epic fighting, San Diego? Wow. wow. And I'm really looking forward to this real epic event. Ladies I think we should do one here in San Diego and, and one in crazy. Vegas. What an incredible fight. After three rounds, we go to judges' scorecards. All three judges scored the same way. 29, 28. I for your winner and still. Wow! Wow! wow. And it was not enough. It was not enough. Wow! 
she did it! Wow, look at that. Look at that. Whoa. Now the crowd's booing. Ramos looks very upset. But ladies and gentlemen, you have to understand it's a three round fight. You only take one round. Ramos did take the third round clearly. And she did dominate clearly. However, she, if she would have only done that in the first round or the second round as well, it would have worked out. If you watch this replay, you'll see this Pettigrew, Pettigrew got the takedown and Ramos is holding on to that guillotine. On the line. A lot of pressure, tough fight, but you pulled it out. Tell us a little bit about what out what here had in there. Uh, honestly, I'm, I'm a little disappointed in myself. I thought I was going to be able to listen to my corner a little bit better. And I don't know, I kind of fucked up the third round. But, um, I wasn't trying to make it boring. Uh, I tried my best to take her down. She's upset. You know what? I've apologized for a boring fight before. Don't apologize. It, it happens. Um, but it wasn't. Once you got the takedown, it got exciting. You now, in that third round, though, she started landing, and you were looking a little tired. Uh, what did, how'd you feel in that third round? Yeah, early on the round, early on the round, but this crowd erupted my vote for fight of the night. In my opinion, it was two rounds to one, and um, how do you feel when the crowd went crazy and this place was shaken? Honestly, I just kept saying to myself, what the fuck are you doing? Oh, sorry, sorry about that. You let you potty mouth you. Uh-huh, so uh, she's just a beast. I was trying to get my rhythm and try to... She would try to use my hands, but I just couldn't get my rhythm, and she just kept nailing me, so. Well, Tina, it was a hell of a fight. The crowd loved it. It was uh, boring in the first round, but midway through the fight, it turned into fight of the night. Let's give it up for Tina Pettigrew defending her title. And one more thing, Tina, that was such a great fight. Would, would you be willing to play this one back? Absolutely, absolutely. Go, so I think we All right, I'd love to see it. Your champion, Tina Pettigrew.